Remember the three macroeconomic goals, price stability, low unemployment, and high and sustained economic growth? Is there a tool that we can use to allow us to understand how price level, P, unemployment, U, and real GDP, or quantity of goods and services, Q, are determined? Well, we already have a tool, sort of. We'll just need to adapt it. It's the market tool, the supply and demand diagram. Think about it. The supply and demand in a particular market determine the price and quantity in that market. The issue is that the supply and demand in a particular market help me to find the price of one product, not the price level of all products, and the quantity of one product, not the quantity of all goods and services, also known as GDP. The single market supply and demand diagram is actually pretty simple to modify into a macroeconomic model. Instead of looking at the demand for one product or service, we look at the aggregate demand for all products and services. And rather than the supply of a single commodity or service, let's use the aggregate supply of all commodities and services. Then the equilibrium will represent the macroeconomic equilibrium. Rather than the equilibrium price of a single product or service, it yields the equilibrium price level of the prices for all goods and services. And instead of the equilibrium quantity of a single commodity, the equilibrium quantity of all goods and services, i.e. the real GDP, is yielded. So let's take a closer look at our modified market model, starting with the aggregate demand. Whereas demand for a single product is a collection of all the quantities demanded for that product at various prices and exhibiting an inverse relationship, the aggregate demand for all goods and services is an inverse relationship between the price level in the economy and the quantity of all goods and services demanded, or a collection of all the aggregate quantities demanded for all goods and services at various price levels in the economy. Why is there an inverse relationship? That is, why are fewer goods and services demanded when price levels are higher? Well, for a number of reasons, really. If the overall price level for all goods and services is increasing, other things remaining equal, the existing income cannot buy as much as it used to. Another reason is that as the domestic price level rises, foreign goods start to look much more attractive. Households, businesses, and the foreign sector shy away from buying our more expensive goods. Also, higher prices tend to drive interest rates up. More on that later when we discuss credit markets. But that also depresses the amount of goods and services that the four sectors can buy or want to buy. Just like demand for a single product, a change in the price level will not shift aggregate demand, but only cause a movement along it. Is there anything that can shift aggregate demand? Sure. At a given price level, anything that changes total expenditures will change the overall aggregate demand. Do you remember who makes expenditures on goods and services? The household sector, the business sector, the government sector, and the foreign sector. This means that anything other than the price level that affects household consumption, C, business investment, I, government spending, G, or net exports, X, will shift aggregate demand. For example, in the 1990s, the U.S. stock market really boomed, and many households found themselves, as the market climbed, with increased wealth. This led to increased spending or a rightward shift of aggregate demand. Time to think. For discussion in our next class, what kinds of things other than prices could cause a change in 1. Consumption 2. Investment 3. Government spending or 4. Net exports Now, what about aggregate supply? The aggregate supply is the direct relationship between the price level in the economy and the aggregate quantity of goods and services supplied. The aggregate supply curve, then, is just a collection of all price level aggregate quantity supplied combinations. Why is aggregate supply upward sloping? Well, for pretty much the same reasons that a single product supply curve is upward sloping, cost and profit. As the price level rises in an economy, other things staying the same, more producers, even inefficient high cost producers, can produce and survive. At lower price levels, only the lowest cost producers can continue. On the profit side, at higher price levels, other things staying the same, profits are higher, giving greater incentive to produce. Time to think. For our next class, what could shift aggregate supply? Again, changes in price level will only cause a movement along aggregate supply. 
what types of changes could occur that would have a broad effect on all types of production throughout the economy. Where aggregate demand and aggregate supply meet, we find our macroeconomic equilibrium, the price level, the quantity of goods and services, or GDP, and even an implied unemployment level. More GDP means more jobs and lower unemployment, lower GDP means fewer jobs and higher unemployment. How will changes in aggregate demand and aggregate supply affect prices, GDP, and unemployment? Next time, does the economy self-adjust?